in next 45 minutes or so, I will be discussing the details of institutional participation with all of you. In the morning, I had described the broad contours. So, let me just very quickly recapitulate. Each Akash project center, that is the name by the way we are calling, the name that we have given to those of our remote centers which are partners in the Akash project. So, I will call that as designated RCs. As I mentioned, each Akash project center is primarily required to offer one subject teaching in classroom and offer BE ME projects. I would like to mention that this is the minimum that we expect from each remote center. Much more than that can be done and I would request the remote centers, Akash project centers to consider, be innovative and see what more they can do. What minimally IIT Bombay will provide will be a funding support of approximately rupees 1 lakh and this will be primarily for equipment, consumables, accessories, etc. The participants will be glad to know that when the remote center coordinators asked me, Akash coordinators asked me as to what we are expected to do, you will recall that for the quiz module for example, we needed a local server plus Wi-Fi connections. Now I had advised the Akash coordinator not to spend any money in procuring a large local server now because for the purposes of these two days workshop, we had said that you could install Ubuntu on a laptop or a PC and use that. You can make a dual boot and use that for the purpose of this workshop. Similarly, I had said that please do not spend too much money in creating a complete Wi-Fi infrastructure, but just provide a few Wi-Fi connections in the classroom. I can now tell you the purpose of my advising you not to spend money on this. First of all, this limited amount of rupees 1 lakh is available for funding every Akash center for the entire duration of 2 years. That means if you require something next year, say for example few SD cards or you require some other ancillary equipment or instruments uh, 6 months later, if we consume these funds in installing a server and Wi-Fi connections, then we will have no funding support available for rest of the two years. But of course, we would require a high-end server. After all, Akash will like to download educational contents from a back-end server which is located in your remote center. The reason I had asked Akash coordinators to kindly wait was because another proposal was pending with the government which is to conduct training workshops for 10,000 teachers at a time. That is something which our director, uh, Professor Khakkar mentioned in the morning and for which there is a special session tomorrow uh, which will be conducted by Professor Gayatonde. Now, under that project, all remote centers, not only Akash uh, uh, project centers, but all remote centers which participate in the workshop will be funded to the tune of about rupees 4 lakhs. Uh, 
I don't know the exact amount, but let's assume about 3.5 lakhs each. For building up the minimal infrastructure required to conduct proper workshops. Now, this workshop, this infrastructure includes some funding for a good quality uh, PA system and microphones, etc., a reasonably good handicap, and plus it has a provision for a server plus Wi Fi connections. So, I will write here some audio, video equipment plus server plus Wi-Fi. Now, you will notice that server and Wi-Fi connectivity is something which is very common, which is required for workshops and which is also required for our Akash project. What we are going to do is, while we equip all remote centers with this equipment, the Akash project R&D will ride over the same equipment and that is why the server support which will now by the way be a large server, it will probably have a terabyte of disk with a backup terabyte disk additional, it will provide sufficient processing power to handle all quizzes which will be conducted during workshops. Please note that workshop quiz conduct is common whether you conduct them using Akash tablets or whether you conduct them independently. It will also house your local Moodle because we want to encourage all our remote centers to start using Moodle as a learning management system in their own colleges. For that, if some colleges require appropriate training or additional support, we will be providing that to the coordinators and technical people through the weekend workshops under the other project. So, let us now very clearly demarcate between two projects. This is the T10KT project and this is the Akash project. Now, the good news is that the T10KT project has been approved by the government. What it means is that the funding for this infrastructure will come automatically through that project and therefore, we would like to conserve the funding for the Akash project in order to fulfill the emerging needs. For example, when the final year students do some project and let us say that some project which is on instrumentation or something requires a few additional components say 5000 rupees, 6000 rupees, 10000 rupees, then the Akash coordinator and the respective guides and students should be able to dip into this funding provided for r &D. So, we will in short we will use this funding of rupees 1 lakh per Akash project center very, very selectively to provide absolutely required funding for Akash R&D related activities. However, since every Akash center is also a remote center under the program for T10KT, we will be providing a much larger support. The funding support will not be something that we do traditionally in workshop where for workshop expenditure, we actually provide some advance money to remote centers. This funding support being for equipment this will have to be procured at your end and you will have to ask for reimbursement of money up to the maximum limit that will be defined by us. For equipment procurement such as servers, such as Wi-Fi connectors, such as audio video equipment, etc., we will be preparing specifications. We will also be telling you at what rate we are able to procure this equipment because we have rate contract with the servers server suppliers, Wi-Fi connector suppliers, ancillary suppliers, etc. So, we will inform you about the pricing at which this, these equipment are available in Mumbai to IIT Bob. However, we will not be doing any direct procurement for any college. You will have to follow your own rules of procurement, your own audit policies and make the procurement at your end. If the cost that you end up paying is more than this, then we will be able to reimburse only up to this amount. The remaining investment will have to be made by your college. If the money that you spend is less than this, then of course, we will reimburse this amount to you and then you can make additional request to spend some more amount on some other ancillary equipment which is otherwise required to support Akash activity. So, in short, the funding of this magnitude will come to every remote center 
and as I said we expect to build up to 500 remote centers or 400 remote centers immediately within the next three months. So this is about the funding support. Now let me talk about the R&D project activities. First let me show you the kind of infrastructure architecture that each remote center will have including the Akash project center. You will have a server, you might have many servers on the local area network, but this will be let us say the IIT Bombay R&D server. It is not IIT Bombay server, it is a server provided by IIT Bombay. This server will be located in your server room in your college or wherever and it would be connected on a local area network which flows through your campus. Now on this server we would expect you to provide some Wi-Fi connecting points. These Wi-Fi routers or access points should be located at variety of places. For example, there could be some in the classroom. These are the Wi-Fi points which will be used for access by the students attending the course. There could be some Wi-Fi access points in the hostels. There could be similarly some Wi-Fi access points in the labs. Now the number of Wi-Fi access points that you will put on your local area network will depend entirely upon the kind of physical configuration that you have. It is suggested that you build a virtual local area network connecting all these Wi-Fi points. This server must be connected to an open IP which is used for workshops. It is through this open IP address that you will be connecting to IIT Bombay server or to the internet. Now a server here and these multiple Wi-Fi access points will be all covered in the grant provided by IIT Bombay. It is possible that some of your institutions such as NITs for example or some other better funded private institutions already have a full Wi-Fi connectivity in which case you need not duplicate the efforts, you need not buy Wi-Fi equipment additional. Instead, you may want to buttress a larger server here. We will provide enough flexibility such that what is minimally required for the Akash R&D project is always there in every institute plus something more that they may want to do. It. We would expect some kind of a lab, so let us say a lab in which Akash R&D happens. Now it is not necessary that you set up a separate laboratory called Akash lab although you are welcome to do it. We expect for example much of the R&D to happen either in the CS department or IT department in terms of the direct uh, development around Akash. But a significant amount of development particularly of educational applications and educational contents may happen in other labs. So there may be other laboratories in your institute, lab 2, lab 3, in which these developments may happen. Akash coordinator would receive appropriate instructions to allocate tablets to those groups which are working in different labs. This is about the infrastructure related to Akash R&D that you will set up. Uh, obviously the labs, etc., etc., and the local area network in your campus is expected to be existing. Now let us come to the kind of R&D projects that you would be doing. First of all, let us say some projects related to classroom usage of Akash tablets.
we have already discussed how a teacher can conduct uh, let us say quizzes in a classroom, but that is not the only usage. Once in the classroom a teacher is interacting with students, the teacher may for example upload the transparencies which are used or the lecture material which the teacher proposes to use or has used in the past. Then all of that material would be kept on the Akash server which is Akash designated server or the remote center designated server and that material can be accessed by students using Wi-Fi. So it is quite possible that suppose I tell my students that this is the particular exercise that you need to we will be discussing tomorrow and for that you need to study the following material. Now you might study that material at home. Traditionally you would study it using textbook or something. This time it is possible for you to download the relevant contents from the server onto your Akash tablets, store it in the SD cards or in a pen drive and study it in the colleges. If you are staying in the hostel and if your hostel has a Wi-Fi connectivity, you can download it using Wi-Fi direct or you can study it online live. The point is when you come to the classroom and when I am discussing some aspect of the material that you are expected to have studied yesterday and let us say you want to revise it, you can instantaneously connect to Wi-Fi and download that material then if you have missed it out earlier. In short, we are trying to provide the contents when needed, where needed through the Akash tab. So that is another usage of the classroom. We also propose that eventually students should be able to submit their assignments. So you can publish the assignments on the Moodle while the Akash tablets right now do not have any direct uh, internet connectivity. Please remember that they do not have a SIM card for phone. They cannot be used as a phone. However, they can be used through Wi-Fi connection to internet. So if you provide Wi-Fi connection to internet, people would be able to browse, say while sitting in the canteen, they would be able to browse internet, go to Wikipedia and do whichever uh, access they wish to do uh, for their educational purpose. Now all of this requires a whole lot of additional R&D. Let me explain one sample problem for the possible r &D. As I said, you would have your local server which will have contents here say local contents. Along with this you will also provide for what is known as local Moodle. Now the traffic between students is not one way to just get this material to study. The traffic is actually both ways which means students submit their assignments here and there would be some student, group of students or the teacher himself or herself who might wish to augment these contents. Consider for example a course which is being conducted by Professor Sudarshan. He teaches database management system. Now let us say out of all 250 Akash centers, about 50 centers agree to teach DBMS using Akash tablet. Now they would like to use much of the open source material which Professor Sudarshan has created here. But each one of them will be creating additional material. For example, each teacher will be setting up new questions. Each teacher will be set, uh, selecting new examples, writing some slides. Similarly, when students do the assignment, they may do a course project in which they may develop an application system. They may upload that system here. All the contents which are des desired by you to be an open source, contributed to by your students and the teachers will be accessible to all other local people, but they will all go and sit here in, in this server. Now similarly, there are multiple colleges. So this is college one, this is college two, college three, each one of them these servers. All of them to begin with would require to get contents from IIT Bombay. So let me say that IIT Bombay server encompasses all these multiple colleges. So from IITB, the server contents will be downloaded here. These contents can be used by respective colleges. But the contents given in by the teachers and students should also be available to other colleges. So suppose college A 
creates some very nice examples or some very nice SQL programs and releases them in open source, then IIT Bombay server should facilitate copying of these contents onto the other servers as well, so that all 250 colleges benefit. IIT Bombay server is accessible by, it, is, it will be open source, so it will be accessible by everybody in the world. But the idea is that certain courses which are happening in tandem, we could do some sort of a synchronization. I mentioned this in details because writing a synchron content synchronization software itself is a good research project. There are some open source tools available such as rsync and so on, but we need to build application systems around such tools. So that for example, I can say that look, these 20 colleges are going to teach databases, IIT Bombay is teaching database course, these 21 institutions make some kind of a conglomerate and I should provide content synchronization of certain directories on each of the college servers and IIT server, which means whatever is modified here is available to all 21, whatever is modified in any one of the 21 is all available in the central server. And the central server is structured to have the IIT Bombay's contents plus contents of each individual server in terms of the difference between the main contents and the college contents. I mention this because there are already some MTech projects going on and there is a huge amount of synchronizing software which is available. This is just one example. Any other contents or applications which are created through any one of the subjects taught or the methodology used for teaching using Akash, all of that could be made into this repository. This is about the classroom. What about the final year projects? I think the imagination is limited only by sky. There are, I, I will be uploading by uh, end tomorrow a sheet suggesting some possible areas of research. Many people may think that Akash related research can only be about either the hardware of the Akash or software of the Akash. That is not correct, although that is most welcome. And at the hardware level, there are issues such as power management, optimal performance, kernel optimization, etc., etc. There are many pedagogical issues. How best to utilize Akash for school education? People would have different ideas in doing this. And some of them might want to pursue these ideas through some more investigation. In short, the research and development work that is done in your colleges could be of any nature. As long as it uses Akash and as long as it enhances the use of Akash for educational purposes, we will consider all of that work to be relevant. There is only one requirement that we uh, suggest signed into our very uh, project proposal itself. All the work that is done using these Akash tablets and all the work that is done using the funding that is provided by the government, the results must go into the open source. So all development, whether it is BE, ME projects, contents, applications, all development must be released The idea is that we do this huge collaborative innovation for public good. Although innovation often results in creation of intellectual property and which is legitimately exploited by individuals, groups and companies for financial gains. After all, that is the purpose of much of the innovative r and But in this particular case, we are not talking about collaborative innovation for uh, business purpose but collaborative innovation for the public good. Professor Dr. Chidambaram, uh, many of you would have heard of Dr. Chidambaram, he was chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. He is quite often considered the architect of the modern nuclear program in the last two decades. And Dr. Chidambaram had coined a phrase, that phrase is very, very important.
you are all familiar with innovation, that is what will happen whenever you do R&D. You may not be much familiar with collaborative innovation, but this particular workshop is a great example of collaboration. 13,000 teachers across the country at different places are collaborating with IIT Bombay in exchanging ideas, in understanding specific usage of Akash and so on. So this is collaboration. The greater the collaboration, greater will be the innovation. And we merely would like you all to remember that since this is being funded by the government with the explicit purpose of benefiting millions of our students eventually, we would like this collaborative innovation to be altruistic for public good, intended for public good. Now, when you do something for public good, it is not just good enough to say, look, we have developed this, we put it in open source. Please remember that open source it has its own rules and expectations. For example, whatever code you release in open source must not contain a single line of plagiarized code. The contents that you give must not contain any portion which is copyrighted by someone. This creates a lot of responsibility. As I mentioned, in India, we are unfortunately not very careful about using other people's IP. We do not think that we are doing anything wrong if we just copy a few sentences from a report, for example, and include it in our report. In almost all academic communities world over, this is considered a criminal offense, which means when I submit a report, that report must be written by me in my own words. If I quote some observations made by another academician elsewhere, I must provide credentials. This is called reference citing. This is the discipline that all of us must follow in any report. Please note that any BE or ME project which is released in open source and which has a development around Akash, the project report itself must be completely made available after of course the due certification and submission process in the university for marks. It must be released in open source which means it must be of a very high quality. In fact, I would like you to suggest to your students who work on Akash related projects that at the minimal, you should expect one good technical paper coming out of either the BTEC students work or the ME students work. Let that paper be published either in a local conference or an international journal. That will depend upon wherever they wish to publish it or whatever is the quality of work and quantity of work. But the point is, the technology developed, the application developed, the contents developed must all be released in open source. The servers which we provide and the mechanism that we provide for creating global repositories of these contents will permit you to easily do that. Now, this means that we will have to have a review mechanism for all submission that is made into these repositories, whether in local servers or in IIT. Please note that if I am a student in your college and I write my final year project report along with three other students, I am examined by a local committee, by the university examiners and I get whatever marks do I get. I may occasionally be tempted to make some copying from somewhere else and include it in my report. Of course, if I am caught, you will wrap me and deduct my marks. But if I am not caught, I might get credit for it. I might get a degree, I might walk away. However, I cannot and will, should not be permitted to submit the same report as my contribution to open source. Why? Because once I put it in the open source, thousands of other people in the world will see. Some hundreds will recognize that, oh, these paragraphs are not his own. Some people will recognize that this code which he has written, programs which he has written, part of the program are copied from somewhere else. And it will make not only those students and your college and IIT Bombay a laughing stock but it will bring bad name to the entire country. And that is why we want to be excessively careful about whatever is released in open source from us. Therefore, before we recognize a particular development done by your students or your college teachers or someone, we would like an editorial process to undertake a review of the work submitted. So the submission shall be in the three stages of any work that Akash Research Center does. The first time, this, uh, so you let us say local submission of R&D. So this submission 
will first be accompanied with what we call own certification. That means the guide and the students who are working on that project will have to stipulate in a written certificate that no portion contained in this report is copyrighted by anyone else, that this is their own effort. Of course, you can cite somebody else's work in your report as usual, but there is a strict standard citation practice where you say these are the references, this fellow has done this work, this fellow has done this work and we have done this. That is how the reports have to be structured. We will be putting up example reports and such things in the uh, Moodle for this purpose. So, this is the own certification that is the first thing. Then we would like to do a review. Let me spend two minutes in discussing how such a review can at all be done. First of all, can IIT Bombay do a review for all projects which are submitted? Impossible. You see there are 250 Akash centers today. Tomorrow there will be 400 Akash centers. Let us say every year some five teams only five teams of final year students or ME students do projects. So, there are five projects submitted every year from each Akash center. It maxes 2000 reports. As a teacher, I examine ME MTech project reports of uh, by students of uh, 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 working under other colleagues of mine, just as they examine ME MTech project reports of my students. You know how many we are able to examine? Maybe five to seven, maximum of eight in a year. 2000 reports cannot be examined. So, we would like to provide a collaborative structure for these reviews. This is essentially an academic activity and we would therefore, request some of you only. You need not be Akash project coordinators. You can be professors in these colleges involved in Akash related activities and would be willing to spend some time in reviewing. It is almost like reviewing papers for journals or conferences. We would expect that work to be another contribution from each college of this. So, if I expect my students work to be reviewed by someone else, I should be willing to review the work of some other remote center. This is the practice that we shall be establishing over the coming months and this is the practice that we shall be following over the years. The ambition is very clear. The ambition is ultimately academics would like their work to be published and to be acknowledged and seen by others. You will find that the number of papers which are sent for publication from your colleges are far less than what you people can actually do. In fact, even in IIT system we criticize ourselves for not publishing enough quality work. Although much work happens very less of it is actually written in the proper format and submitted for publication. We would like to use this opportunity to ensure that our sister institutions such as yours also come up one notch above wherever they are in the matter of creating quality technical work and publishing that quality technical work. So, that is a side ambition. I hope you will agree that that is an important ambition. I will also tell you the context, unlike in IIT system where there cannot be any teacher without a PhD degree and without research credentials, most of our institutions cannot immediately get adequate qualified teachers who all have PhD degree. There are some faculty members who have a PhD degree and in fact, they would probably be guiding other colleague teachers in doing their PhD or ME, but the fact is that a large number of our faculty colleagues including many who are attending this workshop are as we speak currently trying to do their ME or do their PhD which means they all would benefit a lot if they can publish some good quality papers. Now, that is a general problem which has to be solved by each individual institution. What IIT Bombay would like to contribute through this project is to build a collaborative community where good quality research happens and good quality research publications happen at least in Akash related work. This should help your institutions to build up some kind of a level in Akash related research which could be either tablet operating system, tablet applications, educational pedagogy, educational uh, technology. There are umpteen names as I said by tomorrow evening I will be putting up a list 
a probable research area and you can choose depending upon faculty's own inclination and depending upon the student choices that you have in each of your institutions. These then are the broad contours of the Akash project. The project funding let me tell you is not much. Majority of the funds that we have received we have spent in placing an order for 1 lakh tablets which was our primary mandate. I was told actually that once I get these 1 lakh tablets and distribute them to the colleges my primary job is over. I did not agree with that observation and I told the ministry officials no sir my primary job starts after that. Why? After all we are not a procurement agency. Even the colleges like yours when you procure some material is that your basic objective? No. You buy equipment, you buy consumables so that your students and teachers can do some academic work. This was very well appreciated by the way by the ministry and the minister himself when I told them that I consider the main purpose of this project is to start work after the deployment of these tablets and to try to see whether our students and teachers together and in a collaborative fashion with IIT Bombay can bring the level of education higher. You bring the level of education higher by doing two things. One, better teaching and that is expected to happen through use of Akash in classroom. But equally importantly, second, by doing R&D to increase the stature and increase the contribution of all the participating teachers, their students and their institutions in developing good R&D work. And that is, I consider to be an equally important second major focus. So in short, teaching and R&D both should happen both should happen on an accentuated and enhanced manner and wherever the work is related to Akash tablets, the work would be supported in cash by some funding that is provided, although that is not trivial, it is important, but I would like to think that and most of you would agree with me that the major contribution of IIT Bombay would be building and nurturing this large collaborative community that today you see here. Let me, let me remind all of you that in independent India there has never been an experiment of this kind which is being witnessed today. I, I think uh, there are totally 17,000 registrations, I confirm that 13,200 are actually finally registered and 2,000 are still waiting for activating their Moodle link. So let me say 15,000 plus teachers from 250 engineering colleges had never come together in the past to discuss how to do R&D, how to use a thing like Akash tablet more effectively in our education. So this is just a beginning friends. On this beginning let us construct over the next two years world class R&D and world class usage in the educational domain of the Akash tablets. I would like to conclude this session by saying that these are the contours of the Akash project participation. I am aware that teachers in different colleges will react differently to this proposal. It is quite possible that many of you would think that okay this is something that we can try. What I am expecting genuinely is that several of you will think otherwise, several of you will think very enthusiastically and use this opportunity not only to do work on Akash which is the primary objective but use this opportunity to create that vibrant collaborative community where the research in all its dimensions, in all fields and all disciplines goes into the next higher level. Every institution, if for example you have so many good quality publications per year, why can't we today say that within three years we will double that number and better the quality. All of that did not happen on Akash related projects. But I am suggesting you take this opportunity just as we are building a collaborative environment here for Akash related work. Similarly, build collaborative R&D activities among smaller subgroups of these colleges with other IITs. IIT Kharagpur is going to join us. When we conduct workshops on different subjects, you can use that opportunity to build small collaborative communities to work together on R&D projects, to get guidance, to get review, to get suggestions. And I am sure you will agree that we can all enhance the level further. There are already some hands raised, but before that, I would like to go over and first complete the demonstration of the 
robo control as well as the Akash programming lab. So, while my colleagues set up the robo here to demonstrate the robo control, let me show the Akash programming lab here. Uh, so, I will very briefly describe in 10 minutes. Uh, you remember in the morning I showed you some applications and now I am going to show the application programming lab that has been created in this tablet. So, as you go to the desktop, there is an APL icon here. When you press this APL icon, you will see these four icons in turn. You will see it says C, C++, Python and Scilab. You are all familiar with C and C++ and at least those who are not programmers would know them as programming languages. Python is another programming uh, tool which is not very well known, but is very heavily used by several researchers even in writing their research software. Scilab is actually a, an extremely important open source product. This is an open source software equivalent of the well known commercial product called MATLAB. MATLAB is something that all of you would have heard of if not actually used it. It is used by scientists, it is used by social scientists to do some statistical analysis of survey results. It is also used by engineers to do a whole lot of design. Now, all these capabilities exist in products like uh, packages like Scilab and Python and a lot of programming is done in C and C++. Notice for example that when we teach programming to first year students, we either use C or C++. Ordinarily, all of these are available on high end servers or on desktop. But you look at the number of desktops that we can have in our labs. Do we have one laptop per student, one desktop per student? No. Students are required to share our infrastructure because that infrastructure is costly. If we can make that programming environment available on an Akash tablet, then students can practice the usage of such programming packages at their own time, including in the labs. That was the objective to provide this infrastructure, this programming infrastructure here. So, here I will show you what I do and then the actual output we will see on the machine interface. So, as I said when I press API, I will get C, C++, Python and Scilab. These are icons. How this has been done I will tell you. There are two very talented engineers amongst us who, uh, whose talent is primarily focused on the operating system and internals. Just as I have talented uh, technical team members who have built the a clicker application or who have built other applications, these people have done the following. They have put a Linux operating system layer on top of Android. Those participating teachers who are not from the computer science background, let me tell you that typically an operating system runs a computer like Windows or Linux or Android. Now, Android itself has been developed such that it works on a backend Linux kernel. So, you have, let me, let me just go briefly to, so if you look at a tablet, inside the tablet, you have a Linux kernel. Kernel is some kind of base module of operating system. So, this is at the bottom layer. Now, on top of it, Android operating system is developed. And on top of it, we write various applications app 1, app 2, etc. So, all those APKs that we talked about work like this. They interact with Android operating system and Android uses the Linux kernel here. Now, I cannot write a C compiler or C++ compiler directly on Android because the Android libraries are not suitable to support full-fledged language compilers. So, what my technical teams have done is that on top of this Android, they have created an additional layer of Linux. So, this is double work. You already have Linux at the bottom and you have to put a Linux on the top. But it is on top of this 
that all language compilers have been implemented. So, what you see C, C++, etc., etc., are provided through this mechanism. This is a very complex mechanism. Let us go over and see how this mechanism works. So, let me go to C program, which many people would have seen. So, if you press on C, you will get an interface which will be divided into two parts. The left hand side is actually the page on which you compose C programs. The right hand side is the desktop on which you will see the results. As you know, these three dots here mean the local help menu. So, when I press this, the local menu comes for this C programming environment. Here, you see a menu called example. So, you put this, press this menu here and you see so many examples. Many of you would be familiar with a C program which draws a diamond. So, let us look at this diamond drawing program. This is a small C program which actually draws a diamond. On the left hand side, you will see two small wheels. When I press on these wheels, it is an execute command. These wheels start moving. So, the back end C compiler is actually compiling this program and after compiling it, it will create an executable and it will automatically execute it. You can see on the right hand side that a diamond has been drawn. Now, this diamond has a parameter n and depending upon that parameter, the diamond shape and the number of such star marks will be decided. If you can read this code, there is a parameter n equal to 5 here. So, I have put the cursor here and a keyboard has come. I will just delete that 5 and make it into 7. There is a numeric keypad here. I make it 7 and I have to of course put a comma here. Now, the code is changed. So, you see it is almost as if I am writing a program. This is just an example to show that I can edit this program. And when I completed editing, now this is the program which is modified. If I execute this again, this diamond is a 7 line diamond instead of 5. So, you see this particular effort by IIT Bombay permits people to realize that Akash is not just an access device. You will recall that I had mentioned that it is called access come computing device. Most tablets available in the market including by the way the Corsair iPad which many of us are fond of, they are all access devices. They are not computers in the conventional way. You cannot write programs on them. You can write programs for them on other machines and then upload them and install them. But here you can write programs on this tablet itself. So, we have truly recognized this tablet for what it is, access come computing device. All other applications are as access device which run application. But this particular application is one which permits you to write applications by writing programs. Similarly, there are other uh, uh, things, Scilab for example, this is something which you must see. Take for example, the mesh design code. This is a program. This is a Scilab code which actually calculates uh, a mesh design and shows it graphically. For that you have to enable here a plot functionality and after enabling plot functionality, you execute this particular code. Now, this is not a C program. This is executing on the Scilab which has been installed on this device. So, this is the mesh plot which has been generated on Akash. Now, you can see the kind of computational exercises that can be given. I am sure over the coming weeks and months, people amongst you who do computational fluid dynamics, people amongst you who do finite element analysis, people amongst you who do let us say statistical analysis for the social surveys that have been conducted, all of which can be done on Scilab. So, this is what I wanted to show you that these are the capabilities which are part of the application programming lab. And now, uh, while we look at the uh, robo control application, you will see that in one picture you have a small robo. You will also see that in another picture which is on Akash, you see two screens here. So, on this side you see a camera 
on robo is actually capturing this. I will demonstrate that it is actually a camera on robo. So, you can see a classroom. The robo is currently facing the classroom and that is why on the left hand side you see what the robo is seeing. So, what are we doing? Whatever video stream the robo camera is capturing, it is coming to, uh, through Wi-Fi onto this tablet. On the right hand side of the screen is a camera feed that we are getting from the external camera. Now, what you see here is a robo control. So, let me just try to move it up or down. So, you see when I move it up, the camera is looking at my video technician team and other people here. By this control, I can move the, move the robo. So, you can see the robo is moving using this control here. I can move it, make it move forward, move backward. I can turn it. So, when it turns, it actually shows a different vision. The point of this entire exercise is to show the kind of embedded system control development that can happen. So, let me tell you the background. You might all be thrilled to find out that in just three months IIT Bombay has been able to build these applications. But as all of you know, great applications while occasionally can be built in two, three months, they require great efforts. So, let me tell you about the robo itself. The robo itself is the result of almost three, three and a half years of consistent work by another team led by my colleague Professor Kavi Arya. There is a lab called Embedded Real Time Systems Lab, ERTS lab. IIT Bombay has been holding robotic competitions for ages as you know. In general then the robo development has been an important activity. So, this robo as you see has been developed in that lab. This is called an educational robo and Professor Kavi Arya is already running several uh, uh, competitions across the country. Now, what my team has done is they have mounted a camera, web camera on top of that robo and instead of the conventional robo control that the lab does using other mechanisms, they have designed a special car which is built around a board called Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a small board and it has a small footprint Linux operating system. You can actually do a whole lot of real time control work using that board. So, the webcam which is mounted on the robo can be moved up, up, down anytime. And the robo control can move the robo forward, backward, turn it left, turn it right. These are the controls that the Raspberry Pi board does. Additionally, the Raspberry Pi also collects input from the webcam which is the video stream. It is not as if it is the video stream which is just captured and sent on Wi-Fi. It does not work that way. So, they have to actually analyze individual frames that come and they have to send them and these frames have to be reassembled. There is a lot of work that has been done. So, all these frames come onto the Akash. Now, if you have an Akash tablet, let us say in Nagpur you are sitting there, you have an Akash tablet with this control program. All of you by the way have that control program. If you set the IP addresses correctly, connect it through Wi-Fi to the network, connect it to our robo here, you would be able to do exactly the same controls from wherever you are. The idea behind this application is to demonstrate that regular electronic control applications can be made remote control or internet control by devices such as Akash. So, that was the objective. Now, this is an ordinary Akash tablet like what you have. I told you about the application programming environment. Now, I will switch this off. Would you like to shut down? I will say okay. What am I doing? I am switching off the Android operating system. Why? Because our teams have succeeded in installing native Linux operating system on this device. Actually, many of you may not have many of you may not realize the import of what I am stating. Generally, all these tablets run only versions of Android operating system. Efforts to make these tablets full-fledged Linux are still going on. There are some companies which have succeeded in making them full-fledged Linux. However, the tablet market 
in the consumer area is not ready to use these Linux tablets. Why? Because most of the commercial tablet users are users who access internet and who use it as a tablet. But we as engineering college teachers and students would like to see this tablet being used a regular computer. So let us see what am I doing here now. I am just inserting this SD card. So I have inserted this SD card inside here. This SD card contains a Linux image. Now ordinarily when you switch on a device, it boots Android and you see the Akash logo and other things. What now we are trying to boot is not Android. The booting of the device is not happening from its internal memory, but it is happening from the SD card. Incidentally, all of you should remember that the primary boot drive for the Akash or for that matter any Android tablet is in fact SD card. Ordinarily SD card does not contain boot instructions, so it boots from the internal memory. Now look at this screen. Do you see the difference? This runs Ubuntu, which is a Debian implementation. This is a Linux implementation. All that you have here is a Linux desktop. All Linux applications, including Open Office, including Image Weaver, Web Browser, all of these is uh, uh, Linux. If I click here, these are all Linux programs. So it's just a Linux desktop. Now those of you who are familiar with Linux desktop or for that matter any conventional desktop such as Microsoft will appreciate this. What is the difference in having this operating system? Well, once this operating system is there, I can install all applications and packages which work on Linux. So for example, the regular C compiler, the Scilab, everything, everything can be installed here. You will be amazed to note that the Scilab code which took about 20 seconds to run for doing the mesh design runs in less than 2 seconds on native Ubuntu. So this is the advantage of putting a native Linux onto the Akash tablet. We will be working much more. I just wanted to tell you that the direction in which many of our teams are working. So you saw some applications in the morning, you saw the robo control here. Yeah, some of the people, but what I told you in the morning is that while these people have done a whole lot of work in enhancing this application. The best robo control application was written by eight summer intern students. I would like to share this fact very proudly with 15,000 teachers who are attending here. The pride is in the fact that it is not just IIT students, it is good students anywhere, any one of the colleges that you have, that you lead. All of those students are capable of doing extremely ingenious, innovative programming. These eight students, the story is worth telling, so I'll spend two minutes telling you that each of these students did not have any background in Android when they come here in the month of May. They started learning Android and they were working on general Android development. Some of them were working on peer-to-peer -peer communication, some were working on something else. Then I got this robo-control idea because some BTEC students previous year had developed Android application on their Android phones to control the robo. And Professor Kavi Arya asked me, look, my students can control the robo using Android phone. Can your summer interns do it using your Akash tablet? Akash tablets had just come in then. And I tell you, within 15 days, they worked almost day and night. There was some help from my team, but most of the work was done by them. I will tell you, the senior ministry officials in Delhi, when I showed them, that this control can be done from Delhi, they were so thrilled. And they were more thrilled to find that this was done by a student from any college. And that is the point I would like to make. The talent and innovative work is not limited to few institutions or few students. Anybody amongst us can guide such people, can find such people, and you have enough people who can do this kind of work. So it is independent of today. And if there are some squeakers, some differences, they exist because either initiative is not there or support is not there or clarifications are not there. This is precisely what we want to eliminate using this collaborative approach. In Akash projects, I am telling you, anybody anywhere facing any technical problem, not able to find a solution to a technical problem, should simply put it on the Moodle and I am sure 100 other people would be able to come up with some suggestions, some solutions. 
that is how great innovations happen. I will close this uh, discussion uh, here at this point. So I am now going over to Kalyani Government Engineering College, Kalyani, West Bengal. Hello, I am Kaushik Dasgupta. I am the Akash coordinator. Thank you for the workshop. Actually, we had a few queries. Uh, uh, I tried to install the applications in the new tabs, but out of that only clicker is working. The other four are not working. They are saying some missing files. Uh, I am very curious because nobody else has reported this problem. One suggestion is download those APKs once again and try to install them. Maybe the files were not proper uh, when you downloaded them. What we will do at our end is we will cross check those APK files which are there on the Moodle. We will ourselves try to download and install them and if we face a problem we will get back to you. But otherwise someone from our team will request you to send us the exact list of messages that we get and we will get back to you later. Thank you so much. But there is a one common doubt which has been told to me by my coordinator that even though you are installing those applications, the application, the, the Akash programming lab which has C, C++, Python, etc., everybody is uniformly saying that those are not available on their devices. And there is a reason for that. They are not ordinary APKs. Their installation takes about 10 minutes time and I do not think that the final APK version of those has been uploaded on the Moodle. There is on the Akash 2 website, uh, what I will do is, I will publish the exact uh, uh, link to that particular uh, uh, APL so that you can download that. That has to be installed separately on, on your Akash tablets. But everything that we do here works on exactly the same tablets that you have in your hands. Thank you so much, over and out.